an NBA rookie whose childhood path was shaped by basketball. I wasn't really playing it because I thought I was going to have a future in it. I played it because my mother wanted me to play it to stay out of trouble. His talents took him from Roxbury to Stores and onto the collegiate big stage. Napier's three is good. I'm going into my senior year. I knew if I worked hard, good things would happen. The Huskies but his dreams were much bigger than basketball. Shabazz Napier. It was the loudest I ever heard, and it was the sweetest thing ever because it wasn't because I was playing basketball. It's because I was a graduate. And now he brings his winning ways to Miami. That competitive spirit, that was something that just absolutely jumped out. Shabazz, three, shaboom! It's a great experience to be able to play with my teammates, my brothers, and to continue to learn every day. Napier, oh, he left Bayless in the dust. Inside the Heat, Shabazz Napier. Welcome to Inside the Heat. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eric Reed. In June of 2014, the Miami Heat made a draft night trade with Charlotte to acquire Shabazz Napier with the 24th pick. In his four years at the University of Connecticut, Shabazz was a part of two national championships as a freshman and senior in 2011 and in 2014 when he was named the tournament's most outstanding player. A proven winner and competitor at every level, Shabazz is currently adjusting the life in the NBA as a Heat rookie. It has been an amazing journey, one that began for him in the tough Mission Hill section of Boston. Shabazz, you grew up in, in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Tell us what it was like growing up as, as young Shabazz Napier in, in Roxbury. Certain days was nice, certain days was, you know, was bad, just like in the other old neighborhood. A family of myself, uh, my mom, older brother, older sister, I'm the youngest, and we just was always close to that with ourselves and our community. When did you start getting interested in, in basketball? My older brother played basketball growing up, so I started playing basketball at five and a half, but I wasn't really playing it because I thought I was gonna have a future in it. I played it because my friends played it. My mother wanted me to play it to stay out of trouble, and it was something I enjoyed at the time. As you grew up, what, what were the examples you saw of things you wanted to avoid and, and things you wanted to pursue? You know, I was really very blessed to uh, fall in the footsteps of uh, fellows that played basketball um, that were ordered to me. At the same time, my mom was too strict for me to actually even do anything that I know uh, that she would not agree with. So I did my best to stay out of trouble. You know, sometimes trouble would land in your face, but you know, I did my best to be with the, those guys who I call my mentors to this day that helped me on that straight path. I know Will Blaylock was a guy that figured prominently then and, and still now. Tell us about how that relationship began. I met him because uh, he's also lived in the same community as I did. And growing up, he was the guy that everybody wanted to be. You know, he was our Michael Jordan. I always wanted to stand right next to Will because I seen something in him that I wanted to be like. You know, I wasn't fortunate enough to have a father in my life. And, you know, he was that guy. You know, he was a father figure to me. He brought me into the world of basketball and understood that to get to where I need to go and where I want to go, I have to do something other than just worry about basketball. In my community, at the age of 11 or 12 years old, if you don't have that father figure in your life, you turn into the bad ways of the streets. And I'm glad that he was able to, you know, correct that, because I don't think I would be where I am, you know. Uh, so it's just a blessing. Besides Blaylock, there was a group of guys that mentored Napier growing up, and they went by the nickname the Fab Six, and consisted of Sean Davis, Tony Lee, Kenneth Jackson, Will Dickerson, and Steve Haley. They helped me so many, so many ways. You know, when Will went to college, and you know Tony Lee had had to go to college. You know, Sean Davis and Kenneth Jackson, uh, Will Dickerson, especially Will Dickerson. You know, them guys continue to push me on the right path. My mom was, you know, tremendously. The best thing that ever happened to me. There's nobody better than my mom, but you know, I'm glad them six guys actually continued to uh, have faith in, in me at the time where I didn't know where my head was at. I can feel the love and respect that you have for your mom. I'm sure you must have got some of her toughness and competitiveness to, to be where you are today. My mom is a uh, superwoman. To this day, I don't understand how she was uh, able to do certain things that she did. It's, it's quite hard to be a single parent with one child, but she had three children, and not having a, a stable job, if any, it's quite marvelous what she did. And for my mom, the most important thing was school. I knew that, 
you know, for me to kind of make my mom happy, I felt like it was the right thing for me to do, stay in school, and to walk around with a degree is much better than to not have it. Napier's mom found an activity that put her and her son's passions together through the No Books, No Ball program at the YMCA, where Shabazz started playing basketball. It was literally No Books, No Ball. You know, you got to come to the games with report cards. You got to come to the games with weekly reports. And if it wasn't what it needed to be, uh, you would not be playing. Shabazz went on to attend Charlestown High School for two years and then transferred to Lawrence Academy in Groton, Massachusetts, where academics were the number one priority. There was another culture shock, but it was more of, of something I needed. Where at Charlestown, you're kind of fighting to impress people on your looks. It's not about that. It was more fighting to impress people on your grades. I, I went there to play basketball, but what I got out of it, it was something other than basketball. How did the basketball go for you in your two years at Lawrence Academy? First year went well. We ended up losing on the first round. My next year there, we ended up winning that year. It was just everything I wanted, you know, being on the court and just uh, playing your heart out and getting to a point where you just, you know, win the last game and you're undefeated. That is, that's the cool thing. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. During a challenging childhood growing up in Roxbury, Massachusetts, Shabazz Napier overcame many obstacles. After two years at Charlestown High School, Shabazz transferred to Lawrence Academy where he focused on his academics and led his team to a 29-0 record and a New England prep title as a junior. By his senior season, he was being recruited by many Division I schools. A difficult decision was made easier after Shabazz met a tough, well-respected, straightforward coach from the University of Connecticut. Let's go back to uh, the evolution and the process of saying, hey, I, I want to take that next step and go to college, and your decision process in, in picking the University of Connecticut. The biggest thing I was, uh, I wanted to go to a coach that was going to just tell me what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. Uh, Ms. Coach Calhoun, there's no, no punches with him. He gives you everything. From the first day I met him, he told me, Plain and simple, you come here, you work for a spot, you get it, and you know, you gotta earn that spot, you gotta continue to earn it. And I felt like that was what I needed. And if Jim Calhoun was honest while recruiting you, I can only imagine how honest he was while coaching you. What, what lessons were learned uh, as a freshman and sophomore under Coach Calhoun? You know, Coach Calhoun knew what he saw in me. And of course, I don't see it, because I'm not that ways ahead like Coach Calhoun is. You know, so he was always on me, and it grew me. It made me mature, it made me understand the IQ that I had that I didn't know I had at the time. As a freshman under a legendary coach, Napier appeared in all 41 games, and his play on the court would be a testament to the lessons learned from coach Jim Calhoun. He lays it up and puts you back on top. But he would also look to a teammate and current Charlotte Hornets point guard Kemba Walker for guidance. You know, I, I was able to uh, kind of pick, you know, things that I need to do, for, you know, to get better at my game. And his improvement showed as he was named to the Big East All-Rookie Team. Nice steal. Napier in off the steal, lays it home. Napier averaged 7.8 points per game in his first year with the Huskies and would experience a tournament run that culminated with a 2011 National Championship. After a disappointing end for the Huskies his sophomore year, Shabazz would choose to stay at UConn after the program saw their longest tenured coach step away. But an assistant coach on Calhoun's staff would step up and take over as head coach, former NBA player and UConn alum, Kevin Ollie. And when I found out uh, Coach Calhoun was stepping down, you know, that day was, it was tough for me because I didn't want him to leave, but when, Coach Calhoun left, uh, Coach Ali stepped in. I didn't even think we lost the beat. That was the year, his junior season under Kevin Ali, where Shabazz Napier became a household name. Napier's three, he's going, a dagger! Wild shot, he fakes it in and he's fouled! After leading UConn in conference play, a close bond with his teammates influenced him to return for his senior season in stores. I'm going into my senior year. I knew if I worked hard, good things would happen. Being able to play with Ryan Boatwright, DeAndre Daniels, Nils Giffey, you know, to be with them guys and was with them guys for three years, and we built a chemistry that I felt like we had a chance to, you know, do something. Hey, hey, hey. 
After earning a seventh seed in the NCAA tournament, Shabazz would lead his team to an improbable victory. For us to win it the way we did, coming in as a seventh seed, you know, no one really thought we were going to win it. It just happened to be the right moment at the right time for us. Would be named the tournament's most outstanding player and would go on to win the Bob Cousy Award as the nation's best point guard, as well as induction into the Huskies of Honor. But his biggest feat would come on May 11th. I'm telling you, to be honest with you, it felt great when I <laughs> when I was getting my degree and they called my name out. Shabazz Napier. It was the loudest I ever heard, and it was the sweetest thing ever because it wasn't because I was playing basketball. It's because I was graduating. And that, to me, was by far the best way to go out, you know? I mean, like, literally, it was the best moment. And, uh, and I realized why I went to University of Connecticut.